Bringing you the voice and vision of custom culture and lifestyle, as seen through the eyes of this South Texas duo, welcome to the Custom Couple. JP, welcome to the Custom Couple. Awesome, man. <laughs> I, I'm honored to be here. I, I feel like I'm having pie with the king and queen. <laughs> uh, mud pie, probably. Mud pie. Mm. <laughs> well, it's not one of those pies, that chocolate pie that that lady baked in that movie. What was it? That shit pie? Or what was it? <laughs> oh, uh, oh, what was what was the movie? Oh, that, oh, what was that movie. Sweeney My- Todd, right? Was it? No, Todd? that was the meat pies. Still no, he's talking about oh, the, the the help. The help, yeah, the, the help. The help. Oh, that was the movie. <laughs> like, eat my pie. <laughs> <laughs> yep, absolutely. No, no, it. I, we're not on that level yet. yet. We will yet. Yeah, yet. yet. No, but we are uh, absolutely stoked to have you on the show, and you've got some car shows coming up, so we're gonna get into that as well. But uh, give us a little bit of background about yourself. How'd you get into all of this mess? Man, that's a, that's a great question. Um, look, I'm an old mini trucker, right? So back in, in the late 80s and stuff, I mm-hmm. couldn't afford a Camaro, you know, IROG Z28. Mm-hmm. So when I bought the next best thing that I could afford, and that was like a, a Chevy little pickup, a little uh, GMC S15, and I cut it up. You know, had a convertible and customize it and paint it and stuff. And that kind of started the the the, the meth addiction of uh, custom rides, but you know, as I kind of matured in in, in my uh, in my my love for for cars, right? You know, look, I love all kinds of cars. Um, you know, we've been doing this for over you know twenty years for the most part. And I know you're looking at me like, how the hell does that guy been doing shit for twenty years? He looks like he's twenty five or something. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, 26 that but, was my you know, follow-up that was my question bad. that well, was the follow-up well you know you're close because my birthday is this weekend so it's actually 27 How about oh that? there you so, go nice. all right <laughs> but uh you know it's, it's funny because i um i actually started doing shows to kind of help fund a a college fund for my kids right so i started having kids we got married and started having kids and i was like shit someday these kids are going to want to go to college and i look i don't have that kind of money to do that right so I started doing shows to kind of help fund the scholarship. And I get that question every year, every show is like, where do the funds go to? Well, they go to go pay for my kids' college education, right? Absolutely. Um, and, and we do some other donations. You know, we've done the you know Boys Girls Club and we've done some autism awards, awareness, scholarships at the high school and whatnot. Um, but I'm happy to say, look, my son, uh, my second child, my son graduated from college this past May. So like I got a raise and, uh, you know, the model work, right? So Bill shows, have fun, meet good people and have good music at shows. And it, it, you know, it works. So for 20 years, we've been doing these shows and I did take a break, uh, somewhere around, uh, I don't know, 20, uh, 2008, 2009, I took a break cause I was traveling a lot with my, my day job and stuff and I couldn't do both. Mm-hmm. Um, but then I, I was invited to go out and MC an event, um, in Conroe, Texas, called the Lone Star Throwdown. Not the Lone Star Roundup, but the Lone Star Throwdown. And that one has like 3,000 entries. Yeah, I've been um, to the Throwdown. That, okay. That's a fun show. Yeah, so for like, uh, for the first six years, I emceed that event. I did the awards and we did games and all kinds of stuff. Um, and uh, that kind of catapulted me back into doing shows. And we did a, our comeback show was a show uh, in San Marcos at the uh, old air, airport there at mm-hmm. the um, CAF. And that was pretty cool uh, uh, until the <laughs> until the, the folks at the airport really didn't like all the hooligans, as, as they put it, and, <laughs> and the music and how loud it was and and how many people there was. And, and they kind of uh, we kind of parted ways after the first year because we just couldn't we couldn't find a fit to work with each other, unfortunately. Yeah, um, but that's that uh, we, commemorative Air Force, right? That's yeah. the, the airport out there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it, it's a great location. I love that location. Oh yeah, I I, I would imagine that would have been cool if uh, if y'all could have kept uh, you know the hooligans from messing it up. I, I'd imagine that was the hooligans car club messing it up for everybody. <laughs> Former no. hooligan in here. Yeah. So, so that show was called Meltdown. We used to do Meltdown 
at the uh, uh, Texas Ski Ranch mm -hmm. for many years. You know, the, the overall kind of strategy of, of, of putting this together was let's have fun. Let's make money and have fun, right? And I always selected places that were cool places to go, right? So, like, you think about the Texas Ski Ranch. If you've ever been out there, right, there's a man-made lake. There's wakeboarders go around. There's, you know, fainting goats in the middle of the lake there that one time I got in trouble because I – I, I, I got on the microphone and said, hey, the first person to swim across and, and capture a goat gets, you know, $50. And I had like 10 dudes, you know, <laughs> launch into the water to go get, you know. And then I got in se se severe trouble with, with management of, of the uh, Texas Ski Ranch. Don't mess with our but, goats. Uh, <laughs> it was cool, though. It was, it was a cool thing. <laughs> Uh, we, we used to have bikini, uh, you know, bikini contests. It, it, one year it was muddy and it was like a mud, you know, wrestling pit at that point. It, it became a mud wrestling pit. You know, it was beautiful girls in bikinis getting, you know, all muddied and stuff. Oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> our shows are toned down a little bit more now. Uh, with, uh, but nevertheless, it was a lot of fun, right? It was a lot of fun. But when you think about, like, all of our shows, right? So Luke and Rod, you know, we went to Luke and Bach one night. And we saw uh, some live music, me and my wife. And we're about 45 minutes. We live about 45 minutes south of there. And I told my wife, I said, you know what? I got to figure out how to do a show here. And the following Monday, I gave them a call, had several conversations, went out and visited them and uh, struck up a deal. And we started having Luke and Rods uh, out there. Um, and then uh, there's a place in green that we, we pass by hundreds of times. And we said, man, I always wanted to do a show in that parking lot. And that was the Rocky Nar uh, parking lot there in green. Mm -hmm. And and we started doing a show called River Ride. All right. So you're starting to see kind of the nomenclature of the show, shows, right? Yeah. 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 I, I want to do a show in LaGrange. You call it Chicken Rod. So that <laughs> may be coming up here. Sometime soon, right? <laughs> but uh, uh, so we started doing a show in, in green. And that started to take off to the point where two things. Um, they got bought out and they have a new investor. And he said, hey, listen, we love you guys, but guess what? Next year, you can't have it here because we're going to convert all this land into, uh, uh, you know, glamorous clamp, uh, glamping, glamorous camping, I guess. And they're going to yeah. put all kinds of stuff. So we got kicked out of there, right? Uh, in, in a good way. I say kicked out. You know, we're, we're still good friends. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're moving the show next year to the uh, livestock uh, show area in New Braunfels, right there in the middle of New Braunfels, near a river. So it's still River Rod. Um, but again, you know, green, New Braunfels, beautiful location to go mm -hmm. out to, uh, do cruises and whatnot. And now we just added a new show in Gonzales, Texas, uh, home of the first battle of Texas, right? So all these come and take it flags. Well, you know, our motto is come and show it, right? So we're going to do yeah. the show uh, in Gonzales. Originally, we were going to do um, one downtown like they used to have uh, mm -hmm. before they stopped doing it. But there's construction downtown that wouldn't be done by the time that that uh, we would do our show and it's it's that was kind of a heartbreak because we had actually worked pretty hard uh to kind of get approvals i had to go to the city council and and put on my johnny suit and, and put on my you know johnny hat and and woo the the council to give us approvals and we got it and then it was like oh by the way you're gonna have you know pipe construction in the downtown square during that time oh man mm -hmm. yeah uh, so so we moved it to a place called jb arena so we're really excited about that because that's our first uh, launch outside of the green, you know, hill country area, if you will, uh, of a classic rods. But Luke and Rod, man, it, look, Luke and Rod is a great show. I, I, it's funny because I just put a post up on on uh, Instagram and Facebook. Look, Luke and Rod is a vibe in a lot of cases, right? It's good people, right? The people that come to our shows are great people. I, look, I've I've met some really cool folks. Uh, you know, we got a guy coming in from uh, San Diego, California. He's driving all the way from San Diego, and he's documenting his trip to Luke and Rod. Nice. We got, nice. A, we got a guy from Biloxi, Mississippi, driving in. And then, you know, it's it's funny and sad, but the, the vast majority of all of our entries uh, for our shows are out of the Houston, Dallas, and points in between Montgomery, Texas. I think that town's a ghost town when, when they come to our shows because everybody comes out for that. Um, but we have a lot of folks from out of town to come to our events, and they enjoy our events, and and quite honestly, look, I can't think of doing anything else. In fact, I'm thinking about giving up my regular job and just doing this uh, full time because it takes a lot of time to put these things together. Oh, it but does. I love doing it, and I love doing it, man. Yeah, uh, you know, shit. Ten years ago, I was trying to put on events and I was trying to do all kinds of stuff like that. And you're absolutely right. I mean, just planning a barbecue sometimes is just tough, you know. <laughs> 
<laughs> I, you know, some, you know, some of these big events, I mean, there's a lot of gears in play that have to just all line up just perfect or it's <clears> just a flop. And you know, yeah, I I totally appreciate the the you know the amount of work that definitely goes into some of these events. So um, Luke and Rod's coming up uh, September 11th. Is that right? September 11th. Yeah, just a couple of weeks ago. Uh, uh, way to go to to the the show. So uh, you know it's all outdoors, right? So I, you know I've, I've had some folks say, "Hey, is COVID going to going to make changes or is it going to cancel it?" And no, we're, we're, we're good to go. In fact, I just had a call uh, with the folks at Lukenbach uh, to calibrate and whatnot. And uh, we're, we're, we're all good to go. And, you know, spectator tickets are flying off the, off the books and, you know, uh, we're sold out the number of entries, um, nice. which is good. That, you know, that place is limited to the number of, of spots that we can put in there. Um, so for the folks that are thinking about coming out day of show, Look, we're going to do really hard, play, work really hard to see if we can find spots. Mm-hmm. But right now, you know, we're at capacity. Um, a couple, you know, folks will have messaged me and say, "Hey, they can't come after all, whatever." And we've developed a waiting list for people who want to register in in those spots. So, uh, but for the most part, for folks that show up day of show, you know, we're gonna we're gonna you know have them park in the spe- spectator parking lot. And if as soon as we find more space, if there's space around. Uh, then we're going to uh, register them and put them in the, in the show itself. So I, I know it's going to be a heartbreak for a lot of folks um, because some of them are going to show up and, and be upset about that. But look, I'm, I'm limited. Look, listen to me. I want the world to come to our shows for the most part. Um, but the reality is, you know, we're limited in spots. Oh, yeah, of course. And yeah, there's always those, uh, those you know, last minute folks that, you know, oh, I, I know this show's happening, but, you know, they don't look into, you know, anything yeah. that goes into it. And it's like, you know, we've been warned, <laughs> but yeah. you know, they'll show up and then they, they can't get parked or they're not, you know, not registered or whatever. I know uh, the invasion is going to have, you know, something close to that mm-hmm. as a as an issue for where they have their show at. Uh, that's yeah. coming up in, in October. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. And- We're actually thinking about being part of that show. At the, um, I'm waiting for uh, my son to let me know we might have a booth at that show. Oh, that'd be so, really cool. Uh, if it's not too late already, I hope it's not too late to register for, for a booth, but we might have a, a booth there. But look, we, we go to shows and uh, look, I admire everybody's show, right? Because I know the amount of work that it takes to get to get that going. Uh, look, our, our our staff is family, right? Look, I have, you know, my wife, who's our secret weapon. Everybody loves my wife because I'm the a-hole of the group. She's the <laughs> one that... She's the one that hugs and, and kisses everybody for the most part. And then I, and then I have my, my son who, who helps me with a little bit of everything. And then, you know, I have my, my daughter who helps sell T-shirts and, and all that good stuff. Uh, then I have my, my left-hand brother. I call him left-hand because he's lefty. Left-hand brother that helps me with judging and parking. And then I have our uh, what I call our VP of, of People Affairs. His name is Shitty. Uh, he hates people. So, uh, <laughs> he's our VP of, of, of People Affairs. And he helps me judge and and, uh, and put it together as well. And, and a couple of Danny Santana is another good, a great guy that has been helping us for so many years. And, you know, we just have a look, I'm, I'm a blessed man because I have a lot of fun. I meet a lot of good people. It's been going to a, a great, you know, reason to do it. Um, and, you know, look, I get to hang out with my family and, and, and do these things. Well, yeah, I, I remember uh, I met you. Shit, probably what 2016, 2015. One of the the times down in uh, Pearsall, Texas, is when at, we at talked the uh, South Texas Rock Fest. Yes, yeah. Sir. Sure. When, when we talked yeah. for the first time, and and I, you know, I took a step out of the whole car world for a, a good bit, and then now that uh, we've started the custom couple, and you know, we've been running around with a car club again and doing a lot of things again, like you know it, it's just been blowing up lately so we're we're stoked to be hitting like all of these shows and you know absolutely stoked to have you on the show talking about your you know your shows and then you you know you just uh fell right into the the crowd of that we've been having uh the topic on our show is uh everybody gets their start somewhere mm-hmm. it's either yep. mini trucks or volkswagens so you, you yeah. fell into the, the mini truck side. So we've got a pie chart on the wall that, you know, 
Got to see uh, no, you know, it's just where everybody's going to land. We just tally like, okay, this one was this episode. But no, we do. I do want to say thank you from both of us. We're very excited to go to the show because this is the first time we'll be going together. He's gone separately. I've gone separately. But this time we're going as the custom couple. So we're definitely excited to be out there. Does, does that mean you guys are going to build like a like a, a joint Facebook account now? Is that what's going to happen yeah. here? Or? Uh, nope. Nope. No. <laughs> Absolutely no. not. The, the closest <laughs> thing too is our Facebook page, but yeah. I mean that that's completely <laughs> separate. But uh, no, uh, you've got a couple Fords. So tell us about yeah. the, the the projects that you've got on your hands right now. Yeah, yeah. So so uh, so if you saw me, if we met at, at the uh, Xavier show, Xavier Vinton is is a great guy. By the way, I got to throw out shout out to Xavier. He's always been a cool dude, and and uh, always enjoyed the. Uh, you know, meeting him and his wife and, and, uh, buying stuff at his store too. So, uh, but, uh, yeah, so, uh, we took out the, the, the 60, uh, four T-bird. So just like y'all, right. Mm-hmm. The square bird, yep. Uh, yep. you know, I have, I have a red with a white top square bird with the tuxedo interior. Um, and man, I, she's a redhead, man. Like her name's Lucy and, you know, ever so often, I'll get vapor lock and I've done all kinds of things and we've upgraded some components in the engine, but it, it's always something, right? I mean, look, these are older cars and, and, and it's, they're always, you know, look, I haven't, you know, I haven't d- dropped in a coyote engine in it and I haven't done kind of a resto mod, that kind That's of thing. That's the only way to get rid of those problems. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, like we have so, them too. <laughs> Yeah, so so I gifted that to my son when he when he graduated college. I said, "This is your problem now, bud. This is mine now. You go, go, go out, go out, make money, and fix it, right?" But it's his car now, but it's still parked in my garage for now. But uh, uh, so Lucy, look, Lucy may not make Luke and Rod is kind of the deal. Uh, my other Ford is a F one hundred, right? So the slick, the sixty six slick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, you know I love my F one hundred, and you know flat black. Uh, you know, black interior with some some red accents. It's got a, a custom web um, a tailgate on it, and you know, just just a cool little truck, right? Mm-hmm. And what I have planned for that is to, to bag that. I want to bag that thing, and you know, it still has the original 352, you know, V8, um, you know, choke you know, manual choke. So you know, you got to play with that kind of deal every so often. I was going to ask if the if the T Bird still had the 352. No, it's got a 351 Windsor in it, I think. And that, oh, okay. that thing, the problem with, with that one is that one has a Heltec fuel injection system. And it's so it's it's an older Heltec system that no one can tune that thing. And that's my problem with with Lucy with the T Bird. So I think what I'm gonna do is rip that out and put a Holly Sniper uh, system in it. It seems like that might be a cure. Or, you know, as me and my son were talking one night over like ten you know, plus beers was the hell with it. Let's just rip it and, you know, send it and put a, you know, 5.0 in that thing and, and, and let it rip. So yep. <laughs> we've had many of those discussions yeah. with all cars that we've had. <laughs> as far as the, uh, the, the fuel injection, I think uh, Gina's car, didn't Johnny put fuel injection in it? Yes. Uh, so I think uh, Johnny Plumbers had a little bit of uh, experience with those fuel injection systems. So he might be able to be a, a little bit of help. Cool, man. Yeah, look, so. I, look I, I think I'm going to, you know, look, I, when I talked about doing this full time, I really, I'm really serious about doing this full time, which will give me all kinds of time and room to do stuff. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, so, you know, it's in the garage now. It's collecting dust. In fact, I was in there today, you know, trying to get, you know, start getting stuff together for looking at all our tents and, and chairs and all the stuff that we need to, to put the show on. Um, and I was looking at it. It was like, man, I, I really got to get get on this thing. So ho- hopefully now I'll have a little bit more time once I make this decision to go full time and um, and get that worked on. Look, w- w- what a problem to have. Right. Look, I got to, you know, <laughs> my, my son's got a beautiful, you know, square bird, you know, beautiful car. Uh, and I got the 66 F100. Uh, which I love, you know, I actually put it on for sale just for kicks and giggles. See if anybody would, it seems like everybody's buying cars at, at a crazy price now. Yep. That I've noticed like, well, let that. Me see if I can... Huh? We have definitely noticed that. Like, and we thought oh. Texas was like the, the spot to get cheap cars. No, we found like so many different other places. I was like, excuse me, it's how much? Like, oh, <laughs> no. Yeah. People lost their mind. Like you'll see things like, like my son, right? He, he had a, a, a Silverado pickup, right? 2016, maybe 40,000 miles on a thing. 
he bought it for like 24 right before COVID closed down the world. Mm-hmm. He just sold that thing for like $37,000. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. And, and, and pocketed, you know, that cash. Yeah. And then and then went, up, went out and bought something else, right, at, at a pretty reasonable price, I think. And I was like, dude, like, we need a truck, but heck, I'm, how can you say no to that kind of cash, right? Yeah, for real. Um, I'm going to my with, truck tonight. With, <laughs> no, listen, <laughs> we were, again, uh, over beers, we were shooting the shit. I, and he was like, Dad, I bet you I can sell this thing for like 35 37 I said, the hell are you going to sell that thing for 35 37 And he goes, just watch. And that night, he went on Facebook Marketplace and put it on, on Marketplace, and he got all kinds of offers from dealers making a deal, wanting to make a deal. The following day, we go to Covert in uh, Austin and the deal was done. I was like, holy crap. That's insane. So, yeah, but like, you know, <laughs> but it's crazy now because like you'll see things like, you know, like a 1990 OBS Chevy pickup with 200,000 miles on it and they want shit, $20,000 for it. I was like, are you kidding me? Like, what? Are you, what is everybody smoking? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. Seriously, like, w- what's going on with that? Like, did y'all take that horse medicine or something? Because it's crazy, man. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, we've been noticing that it's just absolutely got nuts, and the weirdest stuff is going for the most, you know, biggest prices lately. And of course, on one of our other episodes, we had a guy that uh, uh, hangs out in uh, the auction houses and and stuff like that, and he helps you know broker deals, yeah. and uh, he was telling us like. You know, right now the like the early '90s Camaros are going for like ridiculous about amounts of money, and you know he had a, he had a few different and cars 90s, that he listed. And the '90s uh, box Mustangs. Oh yeah, the Fox back. bodies. Yeah, I, I did see that, ep- or I heard that episode. Yeah, the the, the Fox bodies, man, mm-hmm. the five point man, the uh, the ice 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 baby. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That yeah. they're just jumping up to ridiculous prices. I'm like, really? Like, oh, <laughs> and shout out to Matt Defeaty because after I uh, talked, I, I talked with him for a little bit after that episode aired, and he totally blew me up. And he was like, "I told you, Fox Body Mustangs were the best." <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, shout out, the, Matt. The used car market is just crazy, and then like the the classic, what you know, we call classic now, is just crazy. I mean, see, look, I mean, see, tens. Look how popular C tens are. I mean, one oh, of the reasons yeah. why I bought an F100 is because everybody had a C10. And I was like, look, I've never had something that everybody else has. I want to have something a little bit different. So I went to the F100, right? Mm-hmm. But, I mean, C10s, I mean, Jesus, I mean, rusted out, and, and they want a pretty penny for these things. I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, Yeah, I was going to say, 15 years ago, you couldn't give somebody a C10, and now you can't afford one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, look, I, I literally just saw a posting uh, on Facebook for sale – and it was like a hundred grand and it was nice. No doubt about that. But honestly, I, I think all these TV shows, right? The, the Megan car auctions and, and the gas monkeys of the world, right? I mean, the gas monkeys are, are a perfect example, right? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, it's for TV, right? It's like, yeah. you know, we're, we're going to sell it for, you know, a hundred thousand dollars. But the reality is I don't think we sell it for that amount. I think it's just part of the show. That's literally um, what we talked about on one of the episodes that, yeah. um, that apparently, like, because there were some people that you knew, that Matt knew, that sold their cars on Gas Monkey, and they told, they paid them something completely different off camera yeah. to when they yeah. did it. And I was like, huh, all right. Well, you know, one well of the aren't LST you a movie shows, star? Huh? Aren't you a movie star? And Haven't you been well, on was, TV was, once <laughs> or twice? <laughs> so I had my, my two minutes of fame, right? Um, so <laughs> and one of the, one of the LST, my second two minutes of fame, I'm having some fame now, right? But <laughs> one of, the, one of the, the LST shows, they, the one they aired uh, a couple of years back, they brought out a 49 Chevy, a beautiful truck, beautiful black truck, 49 Chevy. And right before we were going to do the awards uh, ceremony, I had like all these producers, right? And I felt like, I felt like Howard Stern. Remember the Howard Stern movie? I don't know if you ever remember the Howard Stern movie. Yeah, where uh, Private Parts. Yeah, when he, when he had to say KNBC. Remember that? Oh. <laughs> he had to practice that? Yeah, he had to so, practice. <laughs> so on the, on the back end, right, they're like, okay, so how are you going to say it? You know, how are you going to announce it? You know, so we're going to, you know, when you award it to, to, to Richard and the guys, what are you going to say? And then I would say what I was going to say, and they oh no, no, well let's try this, right? Mm-hmm. So oh like, <laughs> like we went back and forth, like role playing this thing, right? Um, and 
So, my, so I get on stage and we start going through it. And I said nothing that we went through the role play. So <laughs> to the hell with Discovery Channel. All right. I did what I wanted to do anyway. So. And they still but aired it? Two minutes of fame there. Yeah, no doubt about that. They still aired it though? They still aired it. Yeah. Well, then they you won. It. You yeah. won. Huh? Then you won. But the, I think they had no choice. They had to air it. Right? They had to <laughs> It's called leverage. <laughs> I love it. That's like but, when the, uh, on the on that uh, now that you got me on a Howard Stern kick when when they're going around the room and like uh, saying all the words that they're not supposed to say on the radio <laughs> and it's like, well, what does it sound like? Yeah, no, <laughs> that's hilarious. You won. <laughs> say it in a sentence, please. Yeah. Hell yeah, yeah. I so, love it. So. Our VP of people, right, Shitty, his name is Shitty. Scott Rich is his name, real name, but we call him Shitty. Uh, it, it's funny because uh, in a group text, we'll, we'll say bad words in Spanish, but then I'll be like, for Shitty, let me decode this, what this means, and then I'll put it in a sentence, so that way he gets good context, right? So I'm, <laughs> I'm his bilingual coach of bad words and, and slang. I love that. Yeah, uh, so – I, I learned only enough Spanish to get my ass in trouble because um, that, that's all the guys that I work with just sit around teaching me everything that, that you're not supposed to say to your boss. And uh, I, I'm in that same boat, shitty. I'm in that same boat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I'm sure they told you the things that, that you shouldn't have said to say them anyway to get you in trouble. At right. least that's what I did a couple of yep. times. Yeah, so yeah. whenever the boss walks by, you're supposed to say no vale verga, but you know, it, you, you say it nicely so they don't, oh, they don't yeah. realize yeah, what you're saying. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the occasional, you know, chinga tu madre, right? Like, yeah, exactly. Mother, right? That's how you say goodbye. That, yeah, like, have a nice day, right? You know, that kind of deal. You know, I've done that a couple of shows. I, I think there was an LST or a Meltdown show one time that I said a bad word in Spanish. I said, oh, that means good friend. You know, go, go at it. Right? You it. <laughs> it's a very right? good friend. Right? Uh, that, that's like on, uh, that was on Cheech and Chong when he's <laughs> yeah, teaching them in the lowrider. How yeah. They turn their van into a lowrider. He's all, yeah. how do you say my really yeah. good friend? Oh, it's Pendejo. <laughs> yeah, Pendejo, yeah. it means good friend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've oh, done that a couple yeah. times. Yeah, that that's always fun to do. We now that I've been there for ten years, I, I I get to do that with the the new people coming in and the the interns that we have that uh, that are coming in from high school and all that fun shit. We get to teach them all these things. <laughs> look, look, growing up in South Texas, right? There was always you know the majority of people there are Hispanic, right? So. And look, and, and quite honestly, as much as I want to claim I know so much Spanish, I really don't. I'm I'm really kind of a a quasi coconut because look, I I know a lot of Spanish bad words and I, los, I know some Spanish terms, but if you tell me to go, you know, conjugate a verb and, and write and, and speak correct Spanish, I'm going to screw up, right? <laughs> but you grow up in South Texas, right? Everything's Tex Mex there. And when I moved, you know, I lived, I grew up in East LA. Even in East LA, I didn't speak Spanish because it was like a $50 fine in school if you spoke Spanish there. But going Is that around right? to, huh? Is yeah. that right? That That's a fact? Yeah, back in the, in the in the 70s, man, like Spanish was taboo, man, like at least where I was at, right, my school. And then when I moved to South Texas, right, all my cousins spoke Spanish and I spoke no Spanish. Yeah. So like I was the outcast, right? I was the, the, the guy that didn't fit in because I, I spoke no Spanish. So they would, you know, pick on me and do whatever, you know, say whatever, right? And I didn't know what the hell they were saying. But as I picked it up, and you know, I remember there was a kid named Patrick Overpeck, I'm sure Patrick Overpeck isn't listening here, but he was like the only white dude in middle school in the eighth grade. And I remember we were playing, we were in football and it was raining and we were all in the gym, just, you know, sitting there waiting. And we told Patrick Overpeck, Hey Patrick, when the coaches come in, tell them chinga tu madre. That means have a nice day. And sure as shit, man, Patrick Overpeck stands up. Hey coach, chinga tu madre. Right. That kind of deal. Right. <laughs> and, and this is right. Like, this is like the early eighties, right? Now you get sued for it. But the coach lined us all in right and swatted up you know gave us swats because he knew that we had put him up to it right <laughs> and, and, and the thing is they sat patrick in the corner of the office i'll never forget this shit in the corner of the coach's office watching us all get swats for making him say you know the bad word right so uh 
So to Patrick Overpick out there, I don't know where you're at. Chinga de Madre, Patrick, because I got a squat. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. You were like the uh, the tail end of uh, no, no pun intended. Uh, the tail end of the the corporal punishment in schools back in the day. They got rid of all that good shit. Man, I remember. Look, I remember football. Like, look, this is like again '80s in South Texas, support you know school district that kind of deal. Man, I, if we had helmets that were new, I mean, Jesus, that was like we always had like these 1960s helmets with one plastic bar. So like, <laughs> like if you, I mean, you, you were lucky if you survived a hit, that kind of deal. But I remember like being in the showers, and the coach would walk in the shower, and I was like, here, here's this 30 year old, 40 year old dude taking a shower with a bunch of you know teenage kids. I'm like. Shit, you think about that now. It's like, man, that's that would I should sue. Like, I should, <laughs> I'm smart, man. Like, shit. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. I mean, we could probably find a lawyer if you if you're a lawyer listening to this <laughs> podcast. <laughs> If you want to pick up a really old case, <laughs> yeah, I don't know what the statute of limitations are, but Patrick Overpick, if you're a fucking attorney, dude, come on up, dude. Let's do this. <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh well, um, you've got okay. So Luke and Rod's coming up September 11th, and then you've got uh, the show coming up in uh, in Gonzales. Gonzales. That's Gonzales. right. That's in November. Yeah. November 20th. Okay. November 20th. Yeah. So we're, we're people are pre-registering now for that and, and we're looking for vendors. So uh, shameless plug, if you're a vendor and you want to be part of a good show, good family, you know, Rod show, come on out, make contact with me. But uh, uh, yeah, so we're gearing up for that as well. And then we start gearing up for River Rod, which is March 12th mm-hmm. in okay. New Braunfels, uh, which is close by downtown New Braunfels. And we're geared up. That one's good, like kind of the granddaddy of all our shows. I think this year we'll probably... Look, we're not a you know Lone Star Roundup, right? But you know, I think we'll hit about 500 entries this year at uh, River Rod. That'll be awesome. Yeah, that'll and, be awesome. Think, but it, then look at it this way too: Lone Star Roundup isn't Lone Star Roundup this year either. They yeah, it, they it, had it to broke go my ahead heart and cancel. Too. Look, I'm, I'm a fan. I'm a fan is just like everybody else's. Um, you know, last year we had to cancel Luke and Rod because of COVID. Uh, the previous year we had to change the dates because of a hurricane that came through mm-hmm. that never never hit us. But most of our people are from Houston, right? So they were going to get impacted. Yeah. So we so we made made a decision to to re, uh, postpone that. Uh, look, in the twenty years, look, I've canceled shows for floods, I've canceled it for hurricanes, and then last year for COVID. Uh, look, so I have to imagine, look, the the, the guys and girls at uh, uh, with the Continentals, right? That you know, it's a lot of pain, man. Especially that's, a yeah, show that's, that's a huge scale. hit. Yeah. 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 And I know people were like, well, you should have moved it out a lot of time ago. You should have done this. You should have done that. But there's a lot of coulda, woulda, shouldas, right, when, you, when you're when you on the, the sidelines and stuff. Yep. Um, but when you're putting in money and, 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 and time and effort and, you know, they've had that show in, in Austin. And quite honestly, I love it in Austin because, you know, you cruise up and down Congress and the whole city is, is, a, is a rod show, right? You know, so like. Uh, so, look, I feel for them. Is it time to maybe look at other possibilities? Sure, maybe, right? But, look, Lone Star Roundup will always be the granddaddy to me in Texas. And there's others across the country. Um, and, uh, look, I love going to that show. I mean, like, the, the, you know, the, the, the diversity of rides that come through and the diversity of people and stuff, it's, it's just a cool place, man. So, so oh, my yeah. hands off to those folks. And it's a whole weekend. I mean, you're, go- you're talking about from Thursday to Sunday, sometimes even Monday, they'll still be yeah. having that, that car show hangover, you know, and there'll be some kind of Everybody something Everybody will go meet on. up for breakfast or something. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. I mean, that it, it that's a big hit, you know, to, to, you know, keep pushing that show out and canceling and moving the date and canceling it again. And yeah, yeah we, we feel for them too. We, we were, you know, we were gonna have a tough time getting to Roundup this year, but we were gonna make it happen if it was gonna happen. Mm-hmm. And yeah. you know, but it it is what it is. We'll be in Lukenbach, Texas, the following weekend, so that be September 11th. Yeah. And uh, we're we're definitely looking forward to that. Mm-hmm. No, absolutely, and and we're look, we're stoked that you guys are gonna be out there and. And uh, look, we appreciate everyone's support, uh, you know, over the last 20 years. You know, last year was our 20, officially our 20th year was last year, but because of COVID, we only did one show. We did the River Rod show. Mm-hmm. Um, but look, over all the 20 years, look, many trucks, lifted trucks, you know, sports cars. Now, you know, we concentrate on, on rods and, and classics and 
you know, we're just we're just blessed to, to be able to have all the people that support us over the years and and all the fun that we had. And, and again, more importantly is, look, I have my, my kids with me. I have my, my daughter, my son and my wife and my brother and, you know, you know, and Shetty, who I love very much. And, <laughs> And, and Danny, you know, helping us out and, and, and putting us on uh, for the folks. And people have a good time. Look, I, I get my job. My jollies really is this you know, people, you know, I shake their hands when they come into the show and I sh- try to shake their hands when they leave. And I, look, everybody has a great time. And, and I appreciate that. I, that gets my jollies. It's just everybody having a good time. Absolutely. Yeah, and that's that's the biggest part about, you know, what we do and what we try to get out and be a part of. And just being being able to, you know, see folks just come out have a good time support you know, big time big time support mm-hmm. i know uh for your show in gonzalez uh our car club has already been uh bringing it up at the meetings yep. that uh we're, we're gonna try to make it out to that one uh That'd be awesome. one you know we're the dead texans motor club it kind of you know goes hand in hand that we need to be you know a part of shows like you know, in Gonzales and historical places in Texas like that. We got to we got to go out and represent that. So we're we're stoked. And and I think there'll be a few of us out at that show, if not the whole club. Yep. Yeah, yeah we, we already got the so the lucky odds may play that one, too. Uh, the Prey Rattlers are, are, are billed to, to play that one. And then we'll probably hire another band uh, out there. And then we're going to have a, a, a pinup girl contest at at the Gonzalez one, okay. uh, Luke and Bach, we have three, we have three bands. Uh, we have, uh, the lucky odds. We, I love those dudes and I'm, I'm glad I'm bringing them out of retirement. <laughs> uh, so lucky odds are playing two tons. Uh, and then the last one I'm escaping my mind. That's uh Brian, Brian in the Brian. blackouts. Brian yes. Duarte is a, a very good friend of mine. And, uh, like I, I actually had him on my old podcast that I had and talked music for like almost an hour and a half. Uh, yeah. so we're, we're stoked for the music that y'all have got. We we're also good friends with the lucky odds. They mm-hmm. come in, they, they play a lot of the, the local little bike shows and car yeah. shows that we have here in San Antonio. And, uh, I've known Jeff for, for a bunch of years as well. And then, uh, I'm, I'm stoked to see two tons, man. I haven't seen two tons of steel in a long, long time. Two, two tons is a good swing band, man. And I, I like them a lot. You know, look, I, They've. I've gone to a couple of shows of theirs in Green and whatnot, and they put on a good show, man. I, I love the, you know, the energy and the vibe. It's not truly rockabilly, but but nevertheless, it's good. Good Texas music, man. And, yeah. I, and I like them oh, a yes. lot. Um. Yeah. Look, so Luke and Bach is is just a good place, man. Just look, I'm excited about it. It's coming up. Um, you know, we're gearing up for it. If if I could pan the camera, there's boxes and boxes of T-shirts. Uh, that we have and you know we have you know our entry email and all kinds <laughs> of stuff and you know it takes over the house doesn't it oh it does it does my you know so right now i'm in the dining room right so like i, I literally take over the dining room on this deal and um you know there was a time we were making our own t-shirts so we'd have presses here and and we'd make our own t-shirt but now like we're you know with the scale of the shows now we, we just outsource all that stuff out makes it a little easier, but you know, we have a, a, a pre-order going on. We sell out every year. Right. So we do a pre-order and I have like boxes full of all the pre-orders and packages and all kinds of stuff. So, um, but we try to make it as easy as possible. Right. So people can come in, you know, when you register for, for one of our shows, we'll send you an entry sticker. We'll send you your wristbands and an instruction kind of sheet. That way, when you drive up, you don't have to, you know, stop at any entry. You just go and park. Mm-hmm. Right. And if you prepay for your shirt, you just go up, give your name, and they'll give you your packet. So it just kind of hopefully kind of speeds up, the, you know, kind of the process for everybody. Um, then having to, you know, park, get out of the car. I was going to say, that's a pretty smart way of doing it because it's just one good flow of like, you it's know where you're going. Flow. You know where you need to stop or what you need to get. Like, that's yeah. actually really nice. I like that a lot. Yeah. Uh, look, when you have day of show entries, that slows it down because you know, that's when you have to get off and you have to register. Yeah sign the waiver do all that good stuff right but if shows are sold out like river rod and luton rod where like it's just come on in yep come on in right and, and it makes life a lot better and a lot easier and more importantly the people who come to our shows love it too oh yeah absolutely do you have anything you want to uh put out there to the folks that are coming or might come to uh the shows this year yeah look, listen you look you know obviously i'd, I'd love for for those folks to you know 
go to our shows and have a good time at our shows, right? You know, Luke and Rod 9-11 is a great day to have it. Uh, You know, of course, Battle Rod's coming up in River Rod as we talked about it. But really, look, I really implore people to go to a show. Look, the first time I met, you know, Jeffrey from Lucky Odds was at the the Greaser show under the, by the bridge in San Antonio, uh, the art gallery show. Oh, the brick? Uh, yeah, I think it's a brick. Yeah, yeah. The, brick. That was the first time I met, I met them, I was like, "Oh, these dudes rock!" They had like a lot of energy. I loved it, right? Like, I wanted to, you know, play that on my, my ride, right? Um, look, go to a show, support your local shows, right? I know mm-hmm. that during our weekend, um, there was a good number of local shows, right? Look, if you can't come to Luke and Rock, go to that show, right? Um, there's a, a, a big show, I think, um, in New Braunfels by the river, um, that's going on the same day. Look again. Go to a show. Take your ride. You know, there's a club out of Houston called Los Muertos that that uh, they bring out a huge assortment of rides from Houston to our River Ride show. I love and that car club. Absolutely. Oh, those, those dudes are awesome, man. And, you know, their deal is drive your shit to a show, right? And they drive their stuff. Uh, and I know that sometimes you can't, right? I mean, you put a lot of money in your ride and stuff, and you can't do that. But, like, go to a show, man. Like, you know, make the scene what it is mm-hmm. and, and, and have a good time, right? Just, just have a good time. Don't expect to win. Just expect to have a good time and you'll have a good time every single moment you go out. That's great advice. You know, I, I know it, the big joke is always that uh, all of the car shows that you ever go to uh, the parking lot will be the emptiest after the awards ceremony. <laughs> and it's always a joke because everybody goes there they call the awards and it's like okay show's over and you know all the folks that didn't win anything are kicking rocks and and pissed off and leaving but you know what like that that is the thing like you know get out have a good time you know some of these shows like i i remember going to shows or you know just cruise ends where it's like there's not a trophy it's just we're meeting up over here and and that's what we're doing you know bring a bring a grill cook out whatever you want to do but you yeah know, uh, but think about most of our roundup right like no one goes to that show unless you know you you've you know have a you know a hefty deal right but no one goes to that show expecting to win like i it, I think my truck's really nice, but like I never expect to go to Roundup and expect to walk away with somebody. That's just crazy, right? I, I've never it, stuck around to see if there's an actual ceremony for it. I, I think <laughs> one year, I think because Jimmy Vaughn was playing that year, and I, and I stuck around. It was Jimmy Vaughn, and then I guess it was the awards. And I, I don't even know if they – I think they give out one award. I don't even know, to be quite honest, what they give out. I mean, I'm so much of a fan of the show and the, and the, and the vibe and the culture there that the reality is I don't really give a shit. Like, <laughs> I was going to say, I, when I we went, car. we didn't like, we just looked at everything. We got to enjoy ourselves and then we left and like, that was really it. Like, that's what we love going for. We love looking at everything and what goes every year because every year there's something new and shiny and it's like, oh, I want to look at that car. Oh, I want to go look at this booth. Like, I love it. It's just so much fun. It's the experience of it all. You know, the, the last roundup show I went, I took, we took Lucy and she heated up on the way from the show, from the fairgrounds to uh, to home slice on Congress. Don't you know so, that feeling? <laughs> Thunderbirds hate Austin. <laughs> oh, dude, so, so mine's lowered like beyond the leaf too, and I bottomed out everywhere. Oh my Every god! Yes. Fucking, you look underneath my car. Unfortunately, it's really clean, but you look underneath and there's some dents here and there, and the exhaust and whatnot because I've bottomed out and hit so many things. Yep. But I'm not bagging it because. Because I, I don't want to, but nevertheless. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, no. Mm-mm. Oh no, uh, and lowered vehicles and chrome exhaust and oh my god, we've had so many headaches with all of it. Yeah, um, yeah <laughs> but they they do not like Austin, Texas. I I, can, I have not been able to get a Thunderbird to get into Austin, Texas. No, because every time we overheat, <laughs> like so last time we were going up to Austin, I overheated in green yep. right at the exit that I needed to take. And I overheated and it took us forever to get home. And then when we were, we drove for another show. I forgot what show it was. It was. We were going to go to Martin's. Oh, yeah. So that was in Lampasas. And I was like, oh, it'll be fine. It'll be good. Nope. The Made minute, it to Buda. Yep. And I overheated. And I was like, shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, we're done. Lucy. Yeah. Lucy's let me down twice. Once uh, in Austin. And the other was going, we we're going to the Victoria show. The uh, the riot. I think it's the Victoria riot. Is it the riot? I can't uh, remember. Yeah, I believe so. I believe it is the riot. 
I have not. I've not been to that one. That that's probably one I haven't. So this this was a nightmare because so we were we were uh, I was following Xavier Vinton, and then I had Manny Cardenas uh, behind us, Mm -hmm. and as sure as shit, I get vapor lock. My car pulled. You know, I had to pull over, and during that time, there was like these kissing bugs everywhere. Now we're in the car. I was waiting for my, tr- my son to come with it. He had a big old truck. We were going to pull it back uh, home. And I told Xavier and, and Manny, you know, keep on going guys. And, you know, thanks. Thanks for you know pulling over or whatever. Well, I, I got this right. And me and my wife were in the car and we had to roll up the windows because there were so many damn kissing bugs. Now <laughs> it, it was hot as hell in that car. I don't know about you. Mine doesn't have AC either. Right. So right. I don't know even being able to turn it on. But we had to roll up the windows because these things were just inundating us, right? So we're sweating like, you know, runaway slaves in this thing, man. Like, <laughs> it's just like bad, man. Like, and you peek the window and it's like bugs on you and stuff. It's crazy. But uh, that was the only two times that Lucy kind of let me down there. God, I love now, hot rods. Just, just <laughs> I, why do we do this stuff, man? My wife asked me, it's like, why do you, why do you put yourself through this pain. I was like, because I love it. Exactly. No, when I, when we brought home Ivy, my, my Thunderbird, I drove, we drove all the way from Houston. He followed in our daily driver. I drove in 105 degree weather all the way home Mm -hmm. to San Antonio. (laughs) And like, I was all sunburned and he's like, you okay? I was like, I feel right. I feel great. This is exactly what it's about. (laughs) I'm going to be sunburned for the next two weeks because of this. We we made two stops. We did. No, y'all you did. Yeah, we yeah. recently did just because it was, you know, a two door and we have our daughter and she likes to come on every single show we go to. So I need to yeah. look for a four door for her. Gotcha. That was that. Was, luckily, it went to someone who I believe will take care of it. But yeah, no, she was very upset when it gone. But there was like no room for her. So yeah. yeah. Now, you guys know Stephen Bramlett, right? With uh, ribs and rods. Uh huh. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Steven's got that beautiful Suburban. Have you ever seen a Suburban? I have seen it. Oh, my God. I love a Suburban. That's a great family hauler. Mm-hmm. Oh, that yeah. Great that, family. We could we could haul the extended family in that one. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Grandmas, aunts, uncles. Everybody. <laughs> you can camp in the back of those. Those are hey, that's what's cool about those. <laughs> we'll go glamping when they open that thing up in green, right? <laughs> You know, when you were saying, well, it's two door and we have a kid, I was like, you know, if I, I went back to my like, Latino roots. I'm like, well, we can stuff 10 people in that car. What are you talking about? Man? <laughs> <laughs> I think we, we went to breakfast one time in the Thunderbird and there was four of us. And I got in the back seat because, you know, it's her car. So she drives 100%. That, that I don't drive her car. That's her car. Uh so I was being nice and, you know, I got in the back seat and a friend of ours and his wife came with us and the wife, I told the wife to take the front seat so the two girls can be up front. And we'll sit in the back. I had my knees next to my ears the entire time we were driving. <laughs> you but, and Todd, because Todd's like six foot two. So they just look well, like in their face. Oh my God. Well, Look, when you, when you got short problems like me, you don't have those kind of stories. Oh, I, don't but, have but those I, problems. I don't have those problems. I don't have those problems. No, that's yeah, why whenever no. it's like, it's kind of small back there. I was like, I'll be fine. I'll be good. I can sit back there. <laughs> We're fun, I'm fun size, man. Exactly. I, I, I fit in the back. <laughs> <laughs> nah, we'll, we'll get a big old boat. We had a big old boat for a little while, too. We had a, we had a Plymouth, a 60 Plymouth, mm-hmm. big old fins and everything. That was a two door car, but it's still. Oh my god, know. that thing was a boat in itself. I mean, yeah, it was. You could lay back there comfortably and be okay. You could glamp in that one. <laughs> I, you know, I didn't even know what glamping was when they told me that last year. I was like, "What the hell is glamping? <laughs> like, what? Like quinoa or what is it? Uh, Gluten free menu is that? Like glamping? What the hell is that? It's almost a dirty yeah. word, right? It like, started, no, believe, I, believe it or not, it started in Austin. Oh, uh, uh, well, imagine that. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But, you know, look, and I, and look, I lived in Austin for 12, 14 years, and I, and I still love Austin, even with all the challenges that it has and changes that it has. That's a nice way. <laughs> you know, look, once you come down 35 and you come down that hill and you go to that curve and you see the, the skyline, I, I don't know, I, I feel this kind of energy about the city, right? Even though it's got the issues that it has and whatnot <laughs> my daughter lives now in austin so i love going to austin because uh, uh you know it just kind of takes me back some good memories there 
But um, Wings Up. Shout out to Wings Up. That's the best wings restaurant in Austin, Texas. I will put it on uh, anything. Really? On yes, anything. 41st absolutely Street. Amazing. <laughs> so we go to a place, because my daughter lives uh, closer to Cedar Park in the Indy area. We go to a place called Brooklyn Heights. Mm-hmm. And there's two reasons why I go to Brooklyn Heights. One is it's really good. B, they have a good happy hour. It's like half off, half off wings. And when I go there, my son-in-law, look, my son-in-law played football at Texas State, and he's six foot, you know, 200, you know, big old mass of a dude, uh, muscles everywhere, right? He can throw down some wings, man. We'll go down there, and we'll throw down some wings, and it's like half price. You get like 30 for like 20 bucks or something like that. It's ridiculous. Oh, that's nuts. Um, that's yeah. nuts for and sure. So you try it out there. It's called <clears throat> you Brooklyn know what? Heights. We will try. We'll we'll throw it out on the podcast. We will try Brooklyn Heights if you will go and try Wings Up. Yep. Up. Hell's, hell's yeah. And maybe we'll hit just, both in one day. Right. We'll just go see. We'll go for one for lunch <laughs> we'll, and one we'll for dinner. We'll meet you for lunch, and then we'll call up Thurman. And we'll go meet him. And we'll him go up. meet him for dinner because Thurman's a really good friend of ours, and he loves Wings Up. He's, He's the, the one, one who that showed us. Showed us. Wings Up. Man. So, so I'll have to look that up. Yeah. Hell yeah. Let's do that. Yeah. It's on the You know, one of the things I like to do. And maybe this is more of an aside here as I'm thinking, my, my brain's thinking here. We need to have uh, you guys give a an award at Luke and Rod. And I have an old glass flask that we can either pinstripe or, or do something. Because I want you, you guys to pick a car of your choice. Oh, absolutely. Uh, we'll definitely do that. Yeah. So we'll, we'll get, we used to give out old flat glass flasks for, for uh, awards. Mm-hmm. We're changing it up this year a little bit. Uh, but we'll, we'll, we'll have some leftover. We can we can do, doll it up a little bit and make it look nice. That sounds awesome. Of course, we'd yeah. love to be a part of that. Yeah, awesome. Cool, man. Well, we will let you get to your normal daily life and let our listeners yeah. quit listening to us ramble on. <laughs> uh, but uh, absolutely appreciate you being on the show, man. And uh, we look forward to seeing you in Lukenbach. Awesome, man. I'm stoked about you having y'all and, and everybody else that coming out to the show. And again, go, go hit a show, go hit a local show if you can. Like do your, do your cult, do your, 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 you know, your community a, a, save, a favor and hit a local show. There's a lot of good shows out there for, you know, different causes and whatnot. Uh, don't stay at home. Just, just go out there. Have yeah. Fun. Just get out, get out of the house. I, I know we're all tired of being cooped up in the house. Okay. All right, folks. Well, you heard it here on the Custom Couple and in all things custom. Keep it cool.